to this final, this final panel, um, this very special panel um, called Loving the Planet One Pixel at a Time, Small File Ecomedia as Pandemic Technologies of Care. Um, and we're joined here um, by uh, Dr. Radek Pichet Piuski um, and uh, remotely uh, in spirit um, by Dr. Laura U. Marks, who's the co-progenitor um, of this project and who's very involved in um, this, this idea of reducing the carbon footprint uh, of streaming media. So over to you, Radek. Uh, thank, thanks so much. Um, and uh, thanks so much for uh, having us, for having me at this uh, wonderful conference. Uh, so um, uh, I'm, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to talk briefly about two uh, interrelated uh, projects. Um, and um, I'm going actually first um, try to stop my video. Um, okay, so um, the two interrelated projects that we've been working on together with Laura are, um, first of all, tackling the carbon footprint uh, of streaming media projects. Uh, uh, and uh, now the related project is Small File Media Festival. Um, uh, which is already in the, uh, this year we had a second iteration uh, hosted by School of, uh, for Creative Arts at Simon Fraser University in Vancouver. Uh, so I'm going first to talk about the, the first project uh, tackling the carbon footprint of screen media. And um, hopefully um, uh, I'll be able to paint those uh, synergies that we have between the, uh, the two projects. Um, so, um, tackling the carbon footprint of streaming media, um, uh, it's, uh, it's a project uh, that is um, uh, really transdisciplinary uh, because the um, uh, call um, um, leaders of this project uh, is, um, are on the one hand, Laura Umarks, uh, who is a really renowned um, uh, media scholar really concerned for the environment. And she is um, um, based at School for Contemporary Arts uh, at Simon Fraser University. And um, another uh, lead par uh, participant, uh, lead researcher uh, is Professor Stephen McConnell um, from a School of Engineering Science from the same uh, university. Uh, now, uh, uh, Stephen uh, specializes in um, green uh, IT uh, and questions of sustainability uh, in computing. Uh, and um, they were joined by me. Uh, I'm a media scholar um, as well. Uh, I'm teaching uh, visual culture and digital media at uh, Trinity College Dublin. And uh, we were also joined by um, an engineer, uh, Alejandro Rodriguez Silva, uh, and um, he um, um, had a totally different background because you know uh, he uh, was a, an engineer. So um, and this was um, funded um, by this wonderful um, grant that uh, we got um, uh, from from Ottawa, um, which um, was uh, this. Um, called um, uh, Living Within uh, the Earth Caring Capacity, which was really kind of poetic, I thought. Um, uh, and uh, it was part of this um, uh, big uh, funding body uh, in Canada. So uh, we started off um, last year and um, the goal of this project was to uh, accurately calculate uh, the um, carbon footprint of streaming media, seeing how uh, this is becoming a real problem, um, especially with uh, the rise of uh, COVID era streaming. Uh, the uh, team was tasked uh, with uh, performing a literature review of all the available engineering sources 
uh, about uh, calculations of carbon footprint of string media. And uh, this was kind of a really daunting task, uh, especially on the part of uh, media scholars. Um, I am not an engineer and I did not know much about that, but by the end of the project, we kind of uh, learned a lot. And I suppose it just testifies to the uh, really um, importance of transdisciplinarity in uh, if, if we are to tackle the problem of carbon footprint, then it of course necessitates a kind of uh, uh, having multiple perspectives um, at the same time. So uh, I'm going to talk uh, briefly um, uh, about our findings. Um, we were tasked with uh, uh, doing literature review and um, on our website, uh, we have, um, uploaded um, our um, um, evidence brief and full report, which is more than 40 uh, pages long. I, I'm going to paste a link. Um, if you're interested, uh, you're really welcome. Um, it, it's really comprehensive. Um, so uh, I'm going to start um, talking uh, uh, briefly about the carbon footprint of streaming media. Um, and um, of course, um, the question of carbon footprint of string media, it's a kind of um, only a small fragment of a larger um, uh, problem, which is the um, carbon footprint and electricity uh, consumption of um, um, ICT, which stands for information and communications technology. So, um, um, electricity from production and use of data centers, networks, and devices. Um, uh, of course, we know it's using a significant um, and rising portion of total global electricity. And uh, the reason being um, uh, it's that uh, fossil fuel energy sources uh, resulting um, uh, greenhouse gas emissions of ICT, uh, because of that are estimated to be about 3% uh, of the global total. Um, and uh, these um, um, predictions are kind of uh, cautiously projected to uh, comprise 7% of the 2016 level worldwide greenhouse emissions in 2030. Um, and, and of course, this is going to also rise to 15%. Uh, so um, it just paints kind of really grim pictures uh, with the um, ICT. Um, having uh, more and more uh, impact. Uh, and of course, what we have found out that, um, well, we have analyzed more than uh, 100 um, articles uh, from engineering literature about the electricity consumption of ICT, about the carbon footprint of ICT. And we have found out that there are really varied estimates of ICT's carbon footprint. Um, and it's just, just um, it seems that those uh, estimates kind of um, uh, vary, uh, vary a lot, right? Uh, so um, our task was to kind of make sense uh, why those uh, predictions are, are different. Um, we were helped uh, by um, the engineering uh, expertise by Stefan and uh, Alejandro and um, um, we um, also um, quickly realized that uh, streaming video, uh, not only streaming video, but also online gaming and emerging technologies, um, which, uh, which we are yet to research, which is AI, blockchain, internet of things, they are by far the largest, uh, they have the, by far the largest demand on ICT. Um, and, um, also desire for high resolution accelerates demand exponentially. Um, we also had a look at this um, Cisco white paper um, and um, that says broadband speak improvements result in, uh, result in increased consumption and use of high bandwidth content and um, applications. So um, uh, this is something uh, called um, Jesus paradox were, whereby more efficient technologies encourage greater use of a resource, reducing or eliminating um, savings. So 
So this is really paradoxical because, um, you know, um, predictions, uh, the white papers like Cisco, they um, are basically saying that, okay, we, we can um, use more because uh, by then um, we have, we will, uh, we'll have all those cutting edge technologies in place, right? So effectively they're um, kind of insidiously um, encouraging more use and they are kind of, um, you know, just pushing for uh, pushing this market demand. Um, and this is something that perhaps Laura would be kind of uh, more uh, well-placed uh, to talk about. Um, uh, but this is something really important when um, um, dealing with the um, um, carbon footprint of uh, ICT. And um, of course, um, I'm just going to kind of um, uh, scroll through this because this is kind of it's, uh, it's uh, goes to the gist of the you know uh, technical and really engineering uh, part uh, of uh, our uh, project um, and um, of course there were various disagreements about uh, the carbon footprint of swimming video and um, and they stemmed from um, um, lots of different um, uh, different reasons, um, um, one of them being this kind of, um, I suppose, um, lack of um, transparency in engineering um, um, uh, research, um, uh, researchers not being upfront about their sources. Um, and also we established that uh, different engineering uh, um, um, articles, different authors had different uh, ideological agendas. So, um, uh, so um, some of them were associated with Greenpeace. Um, um, some of them uh, were associated with the International um, Energy Association. And then, um, you know, um, depending on their ideological kind of affiliation, so to speak, uh, then the numbers would be different. And of course, this is something really difficult to get if you are not in, in, an engineer. And um, uh, our team had um, done a great job or of just, you know, um, sifting through what's true uh, or not. And I kind of, I really encourage um, 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 everybody to um, uh, have a look at our um, uh, research, um, uh, full uh, research report, because everything is kind of really systematically um, uh, discussed uh, there. Um, okay, um, so um, now the disagreements in the scientific literature um, um, also has have to do not only with the ideological underpinnings of the authors or their kind of professional affiliations, but also, it has uh, uh, it uh, has to do with the various definitions of system boundary. Uh, when you are thinking about, you know, how do we calculate the um, carbon footprint and um, energy consumption of streaming? Um, um, of course, we can have various results um, uh, depending how do we define system boundary, right? Um, so the extended system boundary would be uh, uh, user devices, um, user devices, uh, networks and data centers. And uh, some of those studies that we have researched uh, might, uh, for example, gloss over um, uh, the um, um, energy consumption of data centers, which is uh, of course substantial, right? So this was one of the um, reasons for those disagreements in the scientific um, literature. Now, I'm not going to discuss um, all those things. Um, um, just um, suffice it to say that um, um, in engineering literature, there's this um, uh, sense of urgency that um, um, engineers are kind of really desperate for energy uh, efficiency. Um, and uh, there's really limited scope uh, for uh, improvements um, 
there are uh, different uh, methods being tested uh, right now. Um, um, so to do with also semiconductor technology, um, I'm not really well placed to uh, discuss, uh, to be discussing this. Um, but suffice it to say um, that Moore's law, uh, that is doubling circuit density and Kumi's law, increasing energy efficiency are coming to an end. Tech innovation is not coming soon enough to prevent a catastrophic increase in data center electricity consumption. Um, so so th this is kind of really one important um, one important um, conclusion of our research. Uh, so for all those um, beautiful predictions that the, you know the technologies will be there, that technologies will be there um, in place. Um, right now, this is just just um, some sort of uh, feverish uh, dreams rather than um, reality. And um, there's this desperation for energy um, efficiency. Um, so, um, so now, um, how does this, um, all those um, findings that we have, um, how do they feed into the, um, um, our second project, which is um, uh, something called a Small File Media uh, Festival? Um, so, um, of course, um, um, uh, perhaps, um, taking into consideration all those um, results of uh, our survey of engineering literature, which um, just shown place, uh, show, show that, you know, that there's really problem with uh, um, efficiency, that those technologies um, have really um, uh, strong um, carbon footprint. Um, how, what can we do as uh, media scholars to um, lobby for um, sustainability uh, in computing, uh, and uh, in particular uh, also sustainability in uh, uh, media art and sustainable media production? So uh, Laura's answer was uh, to um, create a small five media festival. Um, the first uh, iteration took place back in 2020. Um, and it's a kind of really um, interesting festival, um, also from the point of view uh, of its uh, transdisciplinary synergy uh, uh, with our project uh, tackling the carbon footprint of streaming media. Because uh, the brief of the festival was uh, for the artists to create artworks that are uh, uh, not bigger than five uh, megabytes in, in size and not longer than five minutes uh, in duration. So this is Laura's uh, really wonderful uh, um, invention, uh, this idea of small file. Um, so uh, to get the artist to, uh, you know, to create this provocation, uh, to um, get the artist to uh, produce artworks that uh, can be streamed uh, with um, relatively uh, little uh, damage to the planet. Um, and uh, suffice it to say that uh, this year, uh, which was the second edition, we had uh, uh, artworks from um, um, 100 uh, artists. And um, when they uh, were uh, compressed, um, together, um, this total uh, total um, uh, byte size. I don't think it's really um, exceeded, uh, you know, um, two hundred uh, um, megabytes. So it was kind of really small, and um, I suppose this was uh, really also interesting for uh, um, media artists, uh, for experimental filmmakers, for. Uh, people from demo scene, from um, traditional um, animators to, um, I suppose, um, resonate with our call for this really extremely uh, small file uh, media. And uh, we got a tremendous response. Um, and um, this, is, this is our call from um, uh, this year, uh, we just came up with this totally um, crazy kind of um, 1990s um, fluorescent um, 
um, style and um, for us it was kind of really important to promote this uh, idea of um, having um, experimental and media art that is uh, not uh, more the not bigger than five megabytes and we um, promoted that by having this uh, catchphrase uh, five megs of fun uh, which on various uh, during various uh, online events we would just you know kind of chant it you know <laughs> to get the it's just it was really funny you know um, um, and uh, this year we also introduced a new category uh, which is this kind of really um, playful response to this popularity of um, um, binge watching. Uh, 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 TV series um, on Netflix or other platforms. So we also had a um, binge uh, watching category, um, which we called 22 Max of Trouble because it was, uh, we solicited um, a whole series between three and eight uh, installments uh, that would be kind of logically um, uh, connected. Um, uh, so, uh, so for this we allowed um, a, a bit more um, uh, space because, you know, obviously it, it was a whole series. Right? Uh, so now, um, uh, so this, this was kind of really important also from the point of view uh, of this uh, something called uh, computing within limits. Now, Computing Within Limits is this uh, initiative uh, created by um, a group of uh, ICT scholars uh, led by Bonnie Nardi, uh, who are really concerned about this um, environmental impact of uh, ICT. And those scholars uh, created this uh, research group called LIMITS, um, uh, standing for Computing Within Limits. And uh, they uh, kind of created a manifesto for um, green, uh, green um, ICT computing. And one of the um, points of this um, manifesto was um, um, consider models of uh, scarcity, uh, which we felt that is kind of an excellent um, provocation. And this is really, um, something that uh, we can take on board, uh, you can, that we can also make resonate within our particular domain, which is uh, uh, media studies, uh, media art, um, uh, study uh, into um, experimental um, uh, film and uh, media production. So we kind of really resonated with this uh, idea of computing within limits. Uh, and hence uh, our uh, catchphrases five max of fun and 22 max of trouble transpose this to this um, to um, um, mostly young audiences that uh, otherwise would not have um, considered the questions of um, sustainability. Um, so uh, I'm going to show you um, briefly um, perhaps um, how uh, did we go about uh, the festival? Um, um, so uh, this is um, our website. I'm actually going to switch uh, in a moment to um, uh, our website from uh, this year. Um, so um, we would uh, put on this call for a small file media artworks. Um, uh, and of course we received um, over uh, um, 100 works um, uh, from uh, artists from more than 20 different uh, countries uh, all across the world. Um, and uh, then um, we um, hosted those uh, movies um, on Vimeo, um, which, um, and we uh, would offer um, really discounted um, tickets for our audiences. If somebody could not afford it, then obviously uh, they did not have to pay. Um, uh, there was also this uh, Friends of the Festival uh, pricing to allow um, if people wanted to donate, um, they also had the, this uh, oppor opportunity uh, to do so, obviously. 
Um, and uh, those movies were hosted on um, uh, the Vimeo platform for um, uh, 10 days uh, between uh, the 10th of August and the 20th of um, August. Um, so, you know, the festival just ended some uh, 10 days ago. Um, and um, uh, we curated this uh, movies into uh, 10 different programs. I'm going to um, also show you a bit uh, about that uh, if I have time. But uh, um, I also wanted to uh, um, focus on one element that perhaps uh, does not seem kind of really important. But on our website, we also included um, um, a tab called Solutions. Um, and, um, and we had, um, under that, we had uh, technical solutions and aesthetic solutions. So technical solutions would be resources on uh, transcoding and encoding the um, media works into a small file uh, format. Uh, and uh, as part of uh, um, a course uh, that uh, I taught with Laura at Simon Fraser University. Uh, I was also doing tutorials on those um, transcoding software, which is really open source. For example, uh, Handbrake, um, uh, Avismax, um, and so on and so forth. These are kind of really cool, um, open source, um, really easy to use. Um, 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 programs used for making uh, your um, um, file smaller. Um, and also we had uh, a section called aesthetic solutions, which um, was about uh, different um, uh, inspirations for um, producing uh, small file movies, right? So for example, you can go with a demo scene and uh, produce uh, something which is based um, on executables. Um, but uh, what we have found out that in sustainable uh, media art, actually technical solutions are not simply a tool, but they can also become aesthetic solutions. So uh, for example, I have become really proficient um, in um, using transcoding software such as uh, Avid uh, Max or Handbrake. And uh, I'm using, uh, because I'm kind of, I'm a video artist myself, I'm actually using this as a kind of, um, um, as a, um, not as a just a uh, tool, but also as a sort of art form. So tweaking this um, uh, different uh, parameters of compression, um, this is um, for me akin to a, a sculpture. And, um, and uh, of course, during the festival, uh, there were also many art artists that worked within the compression aesthetics. Uh, and uh, then there were some artists that uh, were more about storytelling and they would just use this a small file uh, medium as a platform, right? And, and of course, we were really open about that. You know, it's just compression aesthetics is just one amongst the many possibilities. And um, we, uh, the goal there was just uh, to get people to use this small file format without really pushing for necessarily for this uh, pixelated, um, you know, glitch aesthetics. We were kind of really open um, to that, and. Um, Perhaps uh, if we um, have time, uh, I could um, uh, perhaps um, show our website. Uh, I don't know, Dan, do we still have time or? Yeah, we've still got five, five ten minutes if you wanted to show some okay. stuff. Brilliant. Yeah, I'm just shamelessly promoting uh, the festival. But yeah, but I think it's, it's, it's really important. Um, OK, uh, so. Okay, so uh, here's uh, our website. Um, what was also really important um, is that we had uh, lots of accompanying events. And the goal behind that uh, would um, to um, continue with this transdisciplinary philosophy 
uh, that we 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 uh, uh, we've had starting from this tackling carbon footprint of touring media projects. So the idea was to activate different constituencies uh, constituencies uh, to uh, talk about small file movies from different uh, points of view. So uh, we were really honored to have um, the um, uh, first of those uh, event series called Engineering Heroes. And um, this was um, led by Laura. And um, 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 it was a really amazing panel uh, where we got this really um, eminent ICT engineers, um, uh, Lotfi Belt here, uh, Anders Andre, and Lawrence Hilty uh, to. Um, talk about uh, uh, the process of calculating the electricity consumption and carbon footprint of um, uh, ICT. And it was really amazing because it was really technical, but also really inspiring. Um, we were really all in awe of this uh, integrity uh, of those uh, engineers, but also the real deep concern for, for the uh, environment. Uh, and then, um, uh, the next uh, event was something uh, totally different. Uh, it was a panel that I hosted myself, um, which was called Small File Cosmology. Um, and uh, the idea behind this would be uh, to get uh, artists, um, curators uh, from, um, uh, in, uh, from all different places uh, across the world to talk about um, uh, how uh, small file movies can actually be related to uh, local practices and technologies, and also uh, how can they actually um, relate to the cosmos itself. So, you know, this theme itself was kind of cosmic, so to speak. Uh, and um, we found that uh, lots of our artists actually um, uh, um, are able to do something really paradoxical uh, that uh, within the five megabytes uh, of um, uh, 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 within the five megabytes uh, within the five minutes so within this really infinitesimal format they can nonetheless open vast universes so uh, hence we kind of uh, thought that this idea of cosmic would be really kind of appropriate um, for this um, for this particular uh, panel. And uh, we had uh, incredible artist um, uh, Juliet Aranda, um, um, also um, Jelena Mikic, uh, visual artist from Vienna, uh, curators uh, Christina Moraru, uh, and also uh, Liganka Madukalia, uh, uh, who is a media artist uh, from um, uh, Assam. Uh, so, um, so that was really totally different perspective from the engineering um, um, uh, heroes perspective because engineering, of course, was really kind of technical, and this was um, um, a way of um, really um, talking about uh, how can a small file um, encourage imagination and also promote um, storytelling, uh, promote also uh, diasporic storytelling. Um, uh, how can uh, this format empower people to come forward and you know, own it, um, uh, change it, make it uh, their own. And um, so uh, as a response to that, uh, we uh, had two makers forums whereby we invited the artists to talk about their practice. And that was really amazing uh, because for some of those um, um, uh, uh, artists, it was the first time that they would talk about their practice. So uh, it was really um, kind of an empowering experience and it was really a humbling experience for us, the curatorial team. Um, we kind of learned their uh, perspective uh, as well. Uh, I think I'm running out of time, but um, I just um, uh, wanted also to say that uh, we had um, 10 uh, different uh, uh, curated programs. Um, 
uh, yeah, so I think I'm going to stop there because um, yeah, I've already took so much time and I hope, uh, yeah, I, I've, I was not talking for uh, um, too long. No, that's fine, Rally. Thank you so much for, for running us through all the wonderful work. It seems like a massive project, um, sort of bringing together a whole bunch of different um, ranges of expertise uh, and disciplines and interests. And, and then also, um, you know, this wonderful creative output that really not just brings to the fore some of the, the, um, the phenomena that are in play, but also some of the material and ecological concerns um, and, you know, some of the creative possibilities as well, which we're always very, very interested in. Um, did anyone have any, any questions for, for Radek? I mean, I'm interested while we wait, maybe some people will drop some things in the chat. Did you, yourself, are you yourself, did you put anything in for the, the Small File Media Festival, Radic? Um, yeah, I'm actually um, also a, a media artist. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I, uh, of course, I, I like to also uh, put some of my work, um, you know, it wasn't, of course, for the prize or anything like that. But mm. um, yeah, I'm kind of, for me, what's really important on the one hand is compression aesthetics. When uh, I'm using this um, transcoding software as a kind of uh, a way to sculpt uh, in, in, in the image, but uh, also on the uh, other hand, um, I'm also a migrant uh, diasporic artist. And for me, uh, there's a resonance between compression aesthetics uh, and this kind of ontological in the betweenness associated with, you know, being migrant, being uh, diasporic. And uh, so for me, it was really in a in a deeply personal way, uh, kind of uh, kind of a journey of kind of empowerment. Uh, and hence, I I could really resonate with lots of works uh, coming from this really sense of empathy and you know um, building a um, community of makers that are um, also interested in sustainability issues but also tackling on board more larger uh, social issues you know I wonder if there's anything that you can speak to in particular about that notion of translating between different media formats is, is there anything in particular there in terms of the process or in terms of the resulting look that really sort of brings home for you that idea of the, the migrant experience? Is there anything there or is it more just a kind of ontological um, sort of process-based journey there? Uh, yeah, I, I suppose, um, you know, um, when you are just tweaking those, um, you know, in a transcoding program, there's this quality setting, for example. And, and of course, you cannot have everything, you know, it just, if you want to go small, if you want to travel, and if you want to go mobile, you have to let go, right? So at some point, you know, there's, um, you just, um, uh, you have, a, um, if you want to have a higher quality setting, then you have to uh, take away some of the other options, you know, such as, um resolution or something like this right so this uh, idea that you know there's always um you're kind of limited in, in 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 a way there's always kind of consequences um you know that you know you cannot just produce like a lot and you cannot and it's not even that this goal right so this kind of kind of humility because um and then it's about you know shaving almost like this um you know uh i don't know 20 uh 20 bytes or something you know it's you work within the infinitesimal uh so so to speak uh yeah but i suppose a lot of um um uh, other artists tackle that really uh in a different way this process of moving or uh translation um there is um for example there 
we had uh, lots of work with um, making available uh, works that were um, uh, created for um, as executables running on you know some obsolete technologies you know so this idea you know how to uh, get it running um, um, as a something that you can put on Vimeo um, so it, this uh, interesting clash on you know obsolete technologies that we also wanted to promote uh, so, so kind of um, this idea that uh, we don't want to necessarily go to uh, the you know cutting edge technologies, um, crypto, this G GN algorithms. Uh, we also wanted to value this really humble obsolete technologies. Uh, but uh, obviously, you know, this also uh, uh, caused uh, problems. You know, how, how do we make it kind of visible and playable um, online? But also, uh, I suppose this idea of translation and mobility, uh, indeterminacy that is inscribed in the small file format uh, also worked on another level because some of uh, our artists, um, for example, we had lots of artists from Iran and, uh, and uh, in lots of those works, uh, really what was really important was uh, this uh, voice. Uh, poetic voice in, in Farsi. And, and then uh, also the question was, um, uh, how uh, do we also make available for audiences that uh, are not, for example, conversant in Farsi? So also the question of subtitles, this, um, I suppose, intercultural uh, translation as small file. Um, yeah, um, that's really interesting. So, yeah. It's sort of all, all the conveniences of, of modern media, but then you're also trying to work within these these limitations, these old technical limitations as well. Um, we've got a, a question from Leah, and then Sean's got his hand up. So Leah, over to you. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Awesome. Um, thank you for that presentation. That was excellent. Um, my question is, I was um, really interested in how you said the students or the uh, people who were making um, the films um, like had to learn about the issue or had no idea about the issue um, beforehand um, and they had to like make through it. Um, and I was kind of like wondering if you had any thoughts or if this was part of like your strategy um, to uh, uh, communicate this message that um, we need to like, uh, make our smiles form uh, our files smaller we need to like reduce the amount that we're streaming um through this like idea of making and getting people to make through it yeah thanks so much uh, for, for 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 this question this is really uh, an important one so obviously we wanted to avoid being kind of overly didactic um and um I have taught with Laura a um, uh, course at uh, SFU and also for Vivo Media Arts Center in Vancouver. And uh, then we would have this kind of, uh, during the first, uh, um, I suppose, um, half an hour, Laura would have this really technical introduction about the problem of carbon footprint. And then we would go through with, uh, with uh, uh, technical um, tutorials, how to go about making something. So, we kind of, um, we included this, this uh, element of awareness, but obviously uh, we have uh, discovered that during our makers forums, um, uh, not all the artists were really um, um, uh, explicitly thinking or thematizing the um, ecological awareness. And, uh, but um, I suppose our goal would be to get the people to use this format as a kind of really attractive platform. We did not want to uh, get in the position that we are kind of lecturing people saying, okay, you need to thematize this, um, um, uh, this, this issue. Um, and um, people were kind of, uh, uh, small file artists actually ended up, um, we can say, um, hacking this uh, format um, also for their own um, different forms of uh, storytelling. So yeah, this is kind of a really interesting question. How do we uh, uh, make sure that also um, 
uh, artists are um, aware of this um, um, environmental problems, but I think it's not so uh, much a question of awareness, but some sort of uh, embodied knowledge that comes from making. Um, and this is some kind of knowledge that you have when you go about creating for this small file format that you will find kind of really uh, enticing. So this kind of embodied perspective uh, um, of sensing uh, rather than, you know, just being overly um, productive and uh, authoritative, I suppose. Wonderful. Sean, over to you. Oh, yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm sorry I came in kind of late there, but I've been teaching this afternoon. Um, but there's there's something I, I particularly love about the title, which is the um, Loving the Planet One Pixel at a Time, which I think is, is really beautiful. And it makes me think, I, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to share my screen, but I'm going to try. Um, this work by Tim Head. Um, it's a, a print, but when it's being made, what it does is it's programming the print, an inkjet printer to make one color point, and then it calculates, and then it puts another point, and the printing takes about eight hours. So there's a performance, and it's a one-off slow movie that literally works one pixel at a time. So I wanted to use that as a way of trying to ask um, about distribution. Because one of the things that um, is, is kind of striking about the films in small file is that um, even though some of them are kind of a little like slow cinema, they're slow in the sense that they have long takes, but they're not slow in the sense of it takes a long time to see them. You know, they like for the files to arrive, for example. And I, there's all sorts of possibilities there, I think, for the production of movies that only arrive pixel by pixel um, or line by line or frame by frame. There's a rather amusing paper um, which I just got sent called Buffering Rage, which is about people losing their tempers when their streaming services go into the spiral of death. But I'm wondering whether that isn't actually a creative moment of, poss of possibilities. And also whether reconsidering distribution instead of being for a large audience to being a very small one, such as the kind of numbers that can gather around uh, an inkjet printer, is another way of thinking of the smallness of a small file cinema. Thanks so much, um, um, Sean, uh, for this really wonderful um, uh, comment. Yeah, uh, this is also something that we were uh, thinking about uh, a lot, the question of distribution. Um, um perhaps uh, our thinking was perhaps a uh, small file it's not something that should be objectified but this is um, uh, something that um, conjures its own modes of appreciating it and so it uh, it also should have small file uh, distribution network so to speak so it really resonates for, with what you were saying that you know, um, how do we um, make it shareable? And um, our, um, uh, our um, goal is to kind of uh, build a, some sort of a network of those small communities um, and also art centers, uh, makers communities that would um, work together and also distribute those, uh, those movies. Uh, and uh, this year we uh, partnered up uh, with um, three uh, really wonderful um, um, institutions um, that uh, also really were interested in uh, promoting uh, a small file. So uh, first of all, uh, it was Vancouver's uh, Vivo Media Arts 
um, um, center really interested also in obsolete media. Uh, Los Angeles uh, Film and Video Poetry Festival, um, also really interested in poetic aspect and also Cairo Video Festival. Um, so um, it's really important to build, build those uh, decentered, uh, the territorialized networks uh, to use the Lesus terms. Of course, there's this, um, um, this um, always this, this temptation to kind of anchor it to some big um, institution to make it academic. But at this really point, we say, uh, no, it should be kind of makers led. It should be a small file. Uh, it should be a small image also in, in terms of distribution. And uh, also I must say, I really like uh, this um, image of this uh, inkjet printer performance that uh, you presented because uh, one of our artists uh, from, um, um, uh, from uh, Iran, uh, Faresh Tursi, um, uh, she created something called uh, um, Toxic uh, acceleration spell, which is uh, a it's a small file that captures this performance of um, translating an image into radio waves, and um, then from radio waves uh, back. I don't know how it works, but it's a kind of um, this small file medium becomes a record of performance of some sort of transcoding or translating and uh, of it's an image that kind of dynamically redistributes itself uh, between our very eyes. Uh, so this is uh, something really important, but I suppose another aspect of distribution is also question of uh, being aware uh, that uh, the places from which uh, we were streaming the, the, the festival uh, were also, um, um, you know, uh, connecting to data centers and uh, those networks were traversing the um, uh, indigenous uh, lands in Vancouver. So um, uh, we also are really, um, for us, it's also really important to make land acknowledgement. You know, the, there's no kind of distribution within being um, aware of the earth that supports those networks and the the uh, the um, um, uh, indigenous communities that um, on whose land those uh, those networks and data centers are. So, so this is I suppose this also really important uh, element of uh, the idea of distribution. I hope I answered your question. Wonderful. Thanks, Radek. That brings us through to the end of this particular panel. As I just put in the, the, the message that's gone out, we're going to have a bit of a post symposium catch up chat. Um, if it's time appropriate, or look, even if it's not, we're still in a pandemic, go and grab a drink, um, bring it back and join us. Jump into any of the rooms. I'm going to just leave them up. Um, so jump into any of the rooms and say hi to colleagues or, or meet some people. Um, but thanks very much, Radek. Uh, and do pass on our thanks to, to Laura as well. Hopefully we can see her um, in, in future symposia. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone for coming along today. Um, and yeah, hopefully you can stay around and, and chat for a little bit. Thanks everyone. See you. Thank you.